Hey guys, Bob here from Raw Strength and Muscle. And let's talk today about body weight or body fat set point. Body weight set point or body fat set point is the theory that is kind of accepted by the scientific community, although nobody can really explain it or prove it. And what it basically means is you have a certain body weight or a certain body composition, you know, body fat percentage, amount of muscle mass, et cetera, that your body accepts, okay? And this supposedly explains why everybody weighs about the same amount all the time. And if you're 25% body fat and you get down to 15, you will tend to creep back up to 25% body fat. You know, if you're at 10% body fat and you eat your ass off up to 25, you will somehow creep back down to 10% body fat. And I think a lot of it's an excuse. Um, I think it is a thing, but I think it's got a very simple explanation. So here is my bro scientific experiential explanation for the body fat set point theory. Let's talk about me. When I joined the army, okay, um, I didn't really eat. At night, I had ice cream and Doritos. Like I would put away a giant bag of Doritos every day and drink a lot of milk. Didn't exercise, okay? Uh, you know, I did a little bit of like a month before I joined the army when I was 17. I did a little bit of, you know, Nautilus and a little bit of walking or running or whatever. I remember the first time I went running, I ate a half a dozen donuts came back and vomited in the sink, okay? The reason why I vomited in the sink was because I was in the kitchen when I decided I had to vomit. The garbage can was like a half turn to my right and I didn't have time because I was so sick. I didn't have time to like turn and vomit in the garbage. I had to vomit in the sink, okay? So that's the life I was living in. I weighed about 185 pounds. Went through basic training, got out, first unit. For some reason, some NCO, some non-commissioned officer was looking at my ID card and he's like, you don't look like you weigh 185 pounds. And the guy next to me just kind of laughed. He's like, yeah, that was before basic training, okay? When I went to basic training, I ate decent food. We weren't allowed to eat dessert in my platoon, okay? So we basically just ate, you know, you know, meat, beef and potatoes, you know, whatever, a little salad every once in a while. You know, that's basically all that we ate, you know, decent food, okay? No junk food. Um, I wasn't drinking milk 24-7, I wasn't scarfing on uh, ice cream and Doritos 24-7, and I was in a regular workout routine, which means we were running every morning, we were road marching a lot because I was in the infantry, uh, you know, walking around with a rucksack, and uh, you know, if it was perceived that we fucked up, we'd be doing push-ups until somebody fucking died. So I did a lot of exercise, and I went from 185 to like, let's say maybe 170, 165, I lost like 20 pounds when I was in basic training. Okay, here I am in my first unit. Um, you know, I'm still eating pretty healthy because I wasn't just having, you know, fucking Doritos and stuff laying around all day for me to eat. Okay, I was exercising every day. We were running every day. I started lifting weights every single day, reading muscle magazines, learning how to eat, etc., etc., etc. Some things that I did while I was in the army. Um, at one point, I ran 10 clicks, 6.2 miles every single day. If I ran with my unit 10, 15 clicks that day, when I got off work, I still ran 10 kilometers every single day, okay? Unless I was off in the field or training or whatever. Uh, there was a point when I swam every day at lunch. I would sneak out at lunch, jump into the pool, swim five days a week, okay? I lifted weights every single day, you know, five, six days a week. Um, I uh, was in a unit one time where Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we would run for hours through the woods, up and down hills, deep sand, loose sand for hours. Tuesday, Thursday, we would uh, walk around with a rucksack on our back, up and down hills, loose sand, a man's rucksack, like a 55 pound rucksack plus for hours. That was it. Five days a week. That's exactly what we did. Okay. I remember one time, uh, you know, we were getting ready to go out and, you know, the, the NCO, the guy was leading the, you know, the PT, he, you know, kind of like, you know, it's like, oh, move back a little bit, you know, let's go ahead and stretch out. He grabbed the guy's rucksack and it was a little bit light. Yeah. Okay. Basically what happened is because this guy had this light ass rucksack, we were supposed to have a four day weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday were off. I was going to go drive down to Key West with a buddy of mine because that's what I did anytime I had time off. So, uh, that was Thursday. We did our road march. Okay, Friday was supposed to be a day off. Friday morning, Friday afternoon, we walked, road marched. Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, we road marched. 
Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, we road marched. Monday was supposed to be a day off. Monday morning, Monday afternoon, we road marched. And Tuesday morning, we were back on plan, road marching again. So in uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So in six days, we uh, road marched uh, 10 times, okay? So that was my life. Now, surprisingly enough, I was staying lean no matter how much I ate because that was my life. That was the amount of energy I put out. Fast forward until I get out of the army. Got out of the army, I was in Germany. Um, you know, I drank a beer every once in a while. I had a little piece of cake every once in a while. I mean, come on, I was living in Germany, the food is awesome. Plus, I was eating like good food, you know, drinking a lot of milk, taking in a lot of nutrients, you know, to build muscle. I was still lifting weights after I got out of the army, but I stopped swimming, stopped running, stopped road marching, stopped doing all my cardio. Needless to say, I ballooned from like 180 or whatever I weighed all the way up to like 225. I got fat as fuck. Strong, big, like a power lifter, but I was fat as fuck, okay? Then when I turned 40, I decided I was going to cut down. So I cut all the way down to 170, maybe 165 even. Um, decided I wanted to go ahead and build up a little bit more muscle. So I started adding calisthenics and I started adding weighted calisthenics, jumped on TRT, started learning more about low carb bulking. And now all of a sudden I'm like a very lean 185. I'm right back where I was when I was 17, 29 years ago. I'm 46 now. Uh, but the difference is I was fat as fuck and weak as fuck and unhealthy as fuck when I was 17 and 185, but now I'm pretty big and pretty lean at 185. Okay. So what I'm basically trying to say is look how many times I've changed my quote body fat set point. Look how many times I've changed my quote body weight set point. And does it really have to do with, you know, Jesus Christ, you weigh 185 pounds at 25% body fat. You weigh 170 pounds at 10% body fat. Does it really have to do with that or genetics Okay, or luck or chance, luck of the draw, who, whose parents you chose, your genetics, or does it have to do with if you eat horse shit all day because you habitually eat horse shit all day and do not move your ass because you habitually do not move your ass, you're gonna be fat as fuck and have a bad body fat composition, a bad body composition, too, li too little muscle, too much fat. Or does it mean, you know, if you somehow decide to fucking work out more or eat less or eat differently, that you're gonna get in much better shape. You know, I've changed my body fat set point a million times, okay? And it has never had anything to do with Jesus Christ striking me with, you know, fucking a goddamn dove or something. It has nothing to do with me changing my genetics like motherfucking Captain America in the super soldier chamber. It has to do with, hey, I'm gonna work out now. Suddenly I changed my body fat set point. I'm gonna eat differently. Suddenly I changed my body fat set point. For better or for worse, if you exercise more or less, eat better or worse, you are going to change your body fat set point. So think about it like this. Uh, there's one guy who commented on a video like years ago. I still feel bad for this guy. He's probably going to come up in a podcast because I talk more about mindset you know, and stuff like that in my podcast. But he basically said he can't go on a low carb diet because he drinks every day. And I said something about that. And he's like, honestly, I have no idea what I would do with my life if I didn't. Like he gets off work, has like a six pack, a 12 pack until he goes to sleep. Then he gets up the next day, goes to work, comes home and just drinks beer until he goes to sleep again. That's like, that's his life. Now, as sad and unfortunate as that is, subject of another you know podcast or something, the fact remains, if he were to not drink that beer, he would probably change his body fat set point. I catch a lot of shit because I told people they should drink diet soda instead of normal soda. The little baby boys who have never trained anybody in their entire lives say, oh, they should drink water. Yeah, they should do a lot of shit. But if you're fucking overweight, as fuck, you eat 14 pizzas and drink five gallons of soda a day, you're not going to eat fucking goddamn, you know, broccoli, ice cubes, and drink spring water starting tomorrow, okay? So it's a huge win if these people throw away the fucking soda and start drinking diet soda instead. Imagine if you drink 500, 700, 1,000 calories of soda a day. Now you go to zero calorie diet soda. Holy fucking horse shit. Did you change your body fat set point or did you stop scuzzling down soda all day? Okay? You know, let's say, you know, intermittent fasting. I have nothing against intermittent fasting, it does not mean if I eat a million calories within a two hour eating window, I'm going to suddenly lose weight, even though I'm way over my caloric maintenance. What it means is it helps some people. So let's say you wake up in the morning, go to work, 
there's always a bunch of donuts laying around and you can't stop eating donuts. You go to lunch with everybody, you can't stop sucking down chicken wings and beer or soda or whatever you have at lunch, okay? Now all of a sudden you go and you do intermittent fasting. You wake up in the morning, oh, great donuts, I'd love to have one, but I can't because I'm doing intermittent fasting. You go to lunch, oh, I'd love to have some uh, chicken wings and have some beer and soda, but I can't because I'm intermittent fasting. So you just drink water, drink black coffee, whatever, come home and you eat your normal maintenance calories. Holy fucking horse shit. Did you change your body fat set point or did you just stop shoving fucking donuts and chicken wings down your throat? So that's basically my point. What I'm basically saying is body weight set point has less to do with Jesus Christ, less to do with genetics, and has more to do with your habits. If you eat like a person who's fat as fuck, you're going to be a person who's fat as fuck. If you move your body and exercise like a person who's fat as fuck, meaning don't, you're going to be fat as fuck. If you live like somebody who is very lean in terms of I eat like a person who's lean, I move like a person, I go to the gym like a person who's lean, you're going to be lean. That's the, basically the way it is. So the genetic set, um, sorry, the body fat set point has less to do with genetics and it has more to do with your habits. So that's just something that I'm thinking you might be able to benefit from. If you're not where you want to be, look at your habits, okay? and see where your habits are bringing you. Are these the habits of a fat person or a fit person? A healthy person or an unhealthy person? Choose, hey, what would a healthy person live like? What would a fit person, what would a lean person live like? What would a muscular person live like? Eat and move like that person you want to be and suddenly, strangest feeling that you're gonna be able to change your body fat set point. Anyway, if you guys are interested in how I changed my body fat set point, okay, by getting very lean, and then staying lean while I got very muscular, check out low carb cutting and bulking. One of the ways that I personally changed my body fat set point as a civilian was by cutting out carbs and doing cutting and bulking on low carbs. It's really been a breakthrough for me. It's not magic. It just means that I cannot say no to a donut. When I eat carbs, I overeat, period, okay? When I cut carbs, I have no problem eating within my maintenance calories or slightly above if I want to bulk, okay, or slightly below if I want to cut. It's been an absolute game changer for me. And like I said, by doing cutting and bulking on low carbs, I don't have this, you know, roller coaster where like I get really lean, add the carbs in, balloon up, get fat, get really lean, add the carbs in, get fat, and then I have to go through the keto flu again to get lean again. Basically, you know, for years, I love my life, I love my food, I love my workouts, I love my diet, just don't eat a whole lot of carbs, okay? So anyway, low carb cutting and bulking, check it out, link below this video. Aside from that, thanks for watching. Take to heart my suggestions about your habits as opposed to your genetically or divinely created body fat set point and see what you can change about your habits to make your life better, to make your body fat set point that which you want it to be. Thanks for watching the video, comment below. I'll get back to you about your comments and uh, make sure you subscribe so you get notified when I put out the next video. Aside from that, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.